Hey everybody, it is Yishan here. And in today's video, I have a special one for you all. Um, my friend messaged me and said, Hey Yishan, Simo posted a video and I think uh, your deck is featured in it. And uh, I took a look, a little bit of a gander, and it turns out my deck is featured in it. Uh, not the one you see on the screen currently, but um, a different deck, uh, a Grand Maji Golden Castle deck that I actually topped YCS Portland with back like 2019, which was like four or five years ago now. It seems like, seems so recently, but it's like nostalgia at this point. And so I just, I, that was I, one of my favorite, most proud creations of all time, what I put together. And uh, they're they're pairing it up. So Simo's playing the Grand Maju deck in this history of Yuki Vitor. They're going to play against MBT, and MBT is playing Clifton Land's Luna Light Orchest deck. Um, and they're going to do battle with each other, uh, best of three. And um, yeah, so I wanted to react to it because uh, you know, I don't usually do react content, but I figure it's it's my deck, so I figure I have some, some right to react to it. Um, so I'm going to start this. I had this at 1.5 speed, but maybe I'll put it back to normal speed or 1.25. Yeah, 1.25 sounds good, I think. Okay. Uh-huh, so this looks like your Luna Light Orcus deck. I love Simo's passion for, for Grand Maju. True. It did. It was the one after. Shout out Gabriel Mendoza. Danger Grand Maju, another... Another masterpiece of a deck list, if I must say so myself. I can't believe two Grand Majus got second and first in two events. God, those were the days, huh? True. Is it? Is it that crazy? I love this. I love the whole fairy tale archetype and all that stuff. And the fact that this was like one of the craziest cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, they did a pretty good job with it. So okay, okay, Simo. Yes, it's not optional. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just repeating what Simo says. It's a little cringe. Um, yeah, this deck, this card, it's just summons Hextrude, when Hextrude's a level 8 that basically pops one on the field, and, um, it's just kind of there to stall out the game. It just happened to be the best level 8 summoner, and the Banish 10 was, like, fine with Gren Maju, and then Gizmic also came out at this time, which was, like, that was the whole reason for this, right? Because I'd played Gren Maju in the past, and I was like, holy crap, Gizmic is good, but I need to abuse it, so I abused it. Uh, with all the level 8s for the sort of the level 8 and then it, it didn't hurt that Super Poly summoned Starving Venom and the Salamangary Violet Chimera, the two most common targets at the time, were, were both level 8 as well, which is a huge, such a huge deal also, such a huge deal. Um, yeah, yeah, that was amazing. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I would say about this deck. The deck was, I mean, I loved this deck. It's like so, just looking at the list, it's so clean. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the side deck was pretty good. I mean, There Can Be Only One carried me all day. That card carried the living, like, just carried me, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, get, exactly. Rank A package, exactly. Sandfile was huge. This card was, like, really, really good in the, um, Salaman Great matchup. Um, super good. Super good in the Salaman Great matchup. Um, mm -hmm. Right, Orcus, I mean, it was good against, because the thing is, Orcus is actually Symbol Skeleton. Loki was the best card in the deck. Like, n n not even kidding. Like, because in the follow-up turn, Symbol Skeleton summoning back your Link or your Xyz was just, that's where the super value came from, because they're basically two for one in there, right, at that point. Yeah, what did I, so what did I think about this deck? Uh... I think I ended up thinking I was playing too many castles, although at the time there wasn't really better cards to play, so I think playing this many castles was fine. Um, and then, yeah, oh, this was another thing. I would not play Predator Plant Dragos to Pilio, which I believe was out at the time, and that would have been a good super play target for the Thunder Dragon deck at the time, because a lot of times they'd end on Thunder Dragon Titan, Thunder Dragon Colossus, and Titan's a light, so I couldn't fuse for starving venom i i, I would have played the card my extra space wasn't that tight um i just didn't even know it existed like you gotta understand guys i built this deck like in my room 
in like online. I just played online, like just came up with this myself. Like it was pretty funny. Um, yeah, I, this was no real testing. Didn't really take it to locals that much, maybe once or twice. I <laughs> just shipped it at the YCS, which was funny. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, Simo makes a good point here. A lot of people that come up to me and tell me that they play Grand Maju and they really like the deck were people that were coming back to Yu-Gi-Oh! And were just like, this gave them a little bit of nostalgia of how Yu-Gi-Oh! used to be. Which was like, you put cards together, not necessarily from the same archetype, but have this weird synergy. And they work together. Um, so I think there's a lot of people that really connect with that part of Grand Maju. <laughs> also, Grand Maju, killing people with that it just never gets old. The first time you do it, like, you can get addicted. You know? It's time to duel. It's time to duel. Okay. Joseph, looking at these decks, and actually looking at next week's decks, you wouldn't think that these were decks that conceivably would be doing this well. Hey, hey, first of all, don't insult Clips and Zach like that. Second of all, don't insult Grand Maju like that. You know? We've um, already kind of beaten the four decks to death, so uh, let's check out some yeah. uh, Orcus variants and let's check out whatever. I have a theory like. also. Like the more you disrespect like Grand Maju, the more likely you are to lose to it. <laughs> the more you talk trash about it, if you're playing it yourself or your opponent's playing against it, the more likely they are to lose to it. You know, it just like it can kind of sense. You're like, hey, hey, you don't, you think I'm bad? Let me just uh, go desire Super Poly. Eater Gren attacking for game. You know. Hey, shout out William Clausen too. Let's roll with this. I rolled a four. The number of times I'm gonna banish ten cards from the top. Of the deck. <laughs> uh, I pick four. Um, I don't. Do you go first? I, I don't remember. I, I don't fucking go first. Are you kidding me? You can go. First. Why did we even roll the die? <laughs> True. Hey, I love going second. Go second. Ooh, Let's take a look at the hands here. Uh, you know what? Two Panker Tops? Uh, not great. Uh, um, what is it, Zodiac? But... Uh, no, no lovely for the training, but he does have Desires and Glyph. So I mean, we'll see where we go here. Uh, I mean, I hear that card's pretty okay. Very interesting so, stuff. Let's well, normal Kaleido Chick. Go for it. And uh, we will activate the effect. We are going to send a... Mm, yes, the Luna Lights. This is cost. Doing the summoning level fours over and over and over again. I'm good. I'm good. good stuff I here. I just gotta say, while, you're go ahead and, while you do your combo, I'm sure you mentioned this in the deck profile, but it is shocking. I know Raphael Nevin top with, won this deck with YC of Chicago in like early 2019, mm. but man, the fact that it took this long to realize mm. how busted some of these cards were I, Anyway, continue. There's a lot to be explored in this format because I remember also, like, or, this Orcust was not even the best deck. It, even at Portland, when I got second, I the best deck, was, no one even played it. It was Sky Circle Orcus by a mile, by a mile towards the end of the format. I mean, that deck was just unbeatable, pretty much. It was play Sky Circle Orcus or bust. Um, at least that's how I remember it. And um, that's what caused that huge ban list later. Um, but it was basically Sky Circle Orcus or bust, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, we're gonna take these two fours. This is gonna really surprise you. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Okay, they're just doing their other their other thing. Yeah, you're fine. Any, anything here? Um. No, I are, are you sure? All right, well, let's go. This back. format, I think, was really how, friendly how for Grand Maju. Still? Like, how is this card still? It's a good people question. were playing Azathoth. You weren't playing hand uh, traps anyway, so it didn't matter. Card around Azathoth, um. The Azathoth itself. Anyway, go ahead. We could start doing uh stuff. And. Nightmare and Grave, but I'm gonna do something else because of the way this hand. Has people wanted to go first, and Super Poly was good. Nightmare Phoenix. Now we'll make and the boards weren't like all super hard negates. It was like usually like, like a little bit of negates with stuff that was good to pop sometimes. We're gonna go. We can specially Luna Light Monster from my deck here. You have to send a card from your hand to the grave. Yeah, we'll do Emerald Bird. I don't think. Okay. And then we will special. Oh my God! I just realized the Serenade Dance Trigger. Honestly, I don't know too much about the Luna Light cards. I just know they summon a bunch of monsters, <laughs> as as any good Yu-Gi-Oh engine would do. Right. <laughs> let's just summon some monsters. Uh, but well, the, you know the, let's, the, let's the key is they need to get Luna Light Tiger. That's the one that does all the work. Um, but I don't see how MBT is going to get it here. So we'll see. And we'll send Cat Dancer or uh, Panther Dancer rather. Question of how far I want to go here. I'll just do the boring combo. Okay, so now they go Orcus combo. 
Yeah, this, oh, by the way, this is weird. I looked at Clifton's list before this video started. No, no field spell. That was the much harder thing for, for the Grand Magic to deal with, because they would just keep Symbol Skeleton in the graveyard forever. And then, if you tried to OTK them, uh, banish Symbol Skeleton, summon Dingirs, you sent your thing, I got a million follow-up next turn. Um, yeah, so they're just playing the Counter Trap. Because they're trying to end on, like, Counter Trap Floodgate, instead of, like, as like an engine kind of thing, but that's much easier for this deck to deal with because yeah, you're playing Panker Tops and Trade In with Dangers and Super Poly. Yeah. Draw Thunderbird here. Um. Let's start with a Glyphe the Phantom. Yeah, I think Glyph is the right. Is it Glyphe or Glyph? I call it Glyph. But maybe it is Glyphe. Ah, uh, see, this one I don't like. Because this is 100%... You're, you're, you're guaranteed getting two for one here. I guess it's fine. You don't... I kind of understand where he's coming from here. But I, I would have liked to go Pankertops, pop the Nightmare. Then go Castle Summon, Hex True, then Pot of Desires. That, that just is better, right? I have to you get it out of hex out of your deck so yeah i mean i think the trade-in was fine i just i wish like i i like to like activate stuff try to get the backer out because you the trade-in to getting negated is a two for one for your opponent right uh, i love ads right youtube and uh, getting rid of the like ad blocker thing hey it's tough it's tough out there yeah, pop long ears if that makes sense. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to kill you this turn, so that's fine. Uh, right. We'll go battle. Let's just go twenty six. This, this looks like like a that's battle phase. Yes. Makes Santa fun. Right, guys, uh, this was Master Rule four, I think. So you couldn't use Draglubian yet because you needed a Link Zone to summon both Draglubian and the Numeron Dragon. So you could actually OTK there, but that didn't even exist yet. Also, you have to detach uh, CMO, and <laughs> that that is a that's an ignition. Yeah, okay. They do it now. Good, good, good. And, 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 and you can see here, Santafon is just too good against Symbol Skeleton. Symbol Skeleton is the best card. There is no question, by the way. Because in the follow-up turns, Symbol Skeleton is the one that's summoning a Link 2, Link 3, or the Dingirsu. Which is huge. Right? Because imagine he's, like, he's just going to try to summon Galatea, make Dingirsu to out this, right? So, that's sort of where we're at, I guess. That's sort of where we're at. Nightmare, something. You're gonna target my Santafon for your nightmare? Why not? I mean, you don't have a choice. <laughs> Does she even do anything? It dumps a monster, which you can't summon. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you could dump if you have Harp. I have World Wand. Or Wand. Yeah. But wand gets from Banish. Now we can go like shows a way to Banish. World them. Wand. Yeah. Uh, world Wand. But you can see here, like this is just like a lot of dancing around, and this it's not gonna accomplish much. Um. Uh, we'll grab. Oh, also, these Orcus decks didn't play Gizmega Roshi at the time, when they, when they should have. Ooh, take it home. Uh, but, yeah, people just were learning, you know? know people were learning. <laughs> wow, he's going first. And he's going first. And I like what Zuma did. Of course, you have to bring in TC Boo. Um, this card's even fine going second, honestly. This is why I love about this card. It's like, okay, if I can break the board and not kill them, but I have TC Boo set up, like, I'm still doing fine. So, like, I, I don't even care, like... If uh, even if my opponent wants to go, they want to go. Uh, they want to go first again. I mean, TCP is still good. So this is where the combo is a little better here. We're gonna activate Kaleido Chick. Send Yellow Martin to grave. Sounds good. There we go. Now we're cooking. That's pretty good. That's all right. Four Strix here. Ooh. Okay. Good. Yep. Get Zephyros. Yeah, we'll grab Zeph. This is gonna get nasty. Sure. But uh, Simo has open super polymerization. <laughs> this is where you're like, oh, I should be fine. I have super poly. What's what's the worst that could happen, right, <laughs> guys? What's the worst that could happen? Pitch the Zeph, I imagine. I'm trying to. too much. I have super poly. It's all good. Okay, let's go. El Tigre. Effect to summon back Kaleido Chick. Sure. Kaleido Chick. Send Emerald Bird. Then we're gonna Zeph. Zeph. Uh, start freestyling. Uh, these two to the grave for Galatea. Okay. Tiger. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this is where the tiger deck is just goes, goes crazy, right? Okay. Okay. It does dark lock you. Nightmare here for world wand. Okay. For harp horror. Okay, there he's cooking. He's cooking. Galatea for world wand. Okay. Set a crescendo here. Cooking, cooking. Surprised. I don't understand why he made Dingirsu here, but I think he, uh, like, wh why he's kind of getting rid of his own counter trap seems odd to me. I mean, I prefer you don't, but that's um, I'm willing to be nice. All right, we'll draw. Uh, let's go standby main. So I have to deal with Griffin. And what did he draw? Did he draw, <laughs> he draw pot? <laughs> yeah, I think he drew pot. Hey, that's a good top deck. <laughs> okay, okay. Good start with Glyphae. Grab the castle. Hmm. And I would like to see him activate the castle here. Oh, see, because I, I want I this just scares me because he might banish two hex truths. Oh, that is. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, you're gonna have to chain super poly here. It's not okay. You super poly discard probably Stromberg or Reborn. Super poly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will pitch. I think honestly, I pitched the cast. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. uh, it's probably <laughs> ding and harp horror. Probably one of the other morons, right? Yeah, I guess we'll just suck up. It's harp horror for sure. You, you want to banish this symbol skeleton. Again, symbol skeleton is by far the best card in the follow up. That's what I learned in this format. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This actually makes sense. So it's not even that bad. You have a TC boo and you cleared their board. And uh, so this is actually okay. Like, this game is looking decent. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you need to banish everything here. I don't think this Eater of Millions attack matters that much. A lot. He's 24. 24, that Chimera should be face down. Yeah. Yeah. He's big. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a. I mean, come on. Like, maybe at least keep like a Nightmare Phoenix in there. Who knows if you want to get rid of this IO on your turn one of these days? Second main, I will set a card. Okay. Anyway, I respect it though. This is this is tough for for MBT though. But you have the TC boot here, so you just chain it, and then it's like GG. Right, again, if they had Symbol Skeleton, they could summon back Dinkirsu, but you banish the Symbol Skeleton face down. So, I, honestly, that's kind of MBT's fault for leaving that card on the field. Um, I will chain, there can be only one. Yeah, so now it's over, like I said. Oh, you're doing this on activation. On activation of one, yeah. Oh, I can't beat this. This is tough. Oh, no. All right, go ahead. He's <laughs> locked under his own <laughs> IO, too. You take seven. Because, like, okay, uh, not, I'm not saying this came up, but, like, you know, if you had a Nightmare Phoenix, he could go, like, uh, let's go Phoenix, discard, Tiger. trade in, reborn. If he had something yeah, to get to reborn, I don't think yes. he does, though. Okay. But yeah, sure. just as a we'll for sake of yeah. argument, yeah, you know. <laughs> like, imagine if he draws Grand Maju off the top. Oh, God. Right? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Well, if he drew Grand Mantra off the top, he would just kill him. So I, okay, I'm just saying, hey, <laughs> maybe it's fine. It's fine. All right. Game three. Okay, so Team already won 2 0, and we get another ad. So magic. All right, we're back. Game three, folks. Uh, I'll let you pick. It's pre side, so this will be the best shot you got. Going first again. No, why would you go? Okay. Just go, just go second against this deck, bro. I, especially if you win the dice roll and you know what they're playing. Just go second. Yeah. I can't watch this. <laughs> oh, he drew the non-bow foolish burial gizmic. Oh, no, don't want to see that, really. That's too bad. Um, not the worst, though. Oh, that's pretty good. Not the worst. We can make it work. We're just going to start this game dark locked. We'll get... Harp War for Nightmare. Uh, we're gonna get <laughs> Symbol Skeleton. Sure. Pimple Skeleton. Yep. Mermaid. We'll Seen this before. The thing about this play is that it's just too interesting. Dark Lock by Summon Nightmare Mermaid. A classic move. <laughs> That's a move right there. A Lunalite card. What about Kaleidochip? Seems pretty good. Oh, we need another card in hand for. 
had to set that one. Uh, let's go Kaleido Chick. I have a feeling there might be a way to get a card back to your hand, just saying. It's possible. I can't really think of one, so you'll have to help me through it. Uh, <laughs> let's go Panther Dance, or Yellow Martin here. Yep, Perfume. <laughs> sure. It, is it really correct to play that, that high scale? That Luna Light scale? Uh, tiger, target Luna Light Wolf? Mm -hmm. Kaleido Chick. Uh, you know what's actually really funny is... I think we're sending. Do we send? We can get to Leo Dancer with this hand. It's just like really, really? bad. It's really not good. Yeah, it doesn't really do much, but it's funny. You know, I didn't think about it that way. Let's let's send. <laughs> let's send uh, we're gonna overlay these two for. Again, Simo opens Super Poly. And then we'll go. If you're playing as a dark deck, open Super Poly feels so good at this time. It's like, oh yes. Summon. Oh my I mean, God, people were citing Super <laughs> Poly <laughs> in non rank eight decks, you, you, like. like nine years you you dark locked yourself and made two ah uh, there you go the nightmares <laughs> it's a nightmare nightmare mermaid nightmare phoenix <laughs> true mbt's right hey if your opponent ever tries to tell you that you can't do that just say no bro hey no there you're you're wrong these are dark monsters the game already so i think i think we're in the clear uh, let's go so now we just cheat <laughs> let's go nightmare four strix for galatea go ahead you know i'll still beat this board i, I don't give a fuck go ahead think you probably will. uh we're going to send world wand world wand that's yeah, fine for See, this is the difference. The deck Simo's playing is probably like five times easier to play than the deck MBT is playing. Maybe not five times, but it's simpler. It's it's the, the strategy is like, hey, listen, you just it's relaxing. You just sit there. You like you just nod your head yes when your opponent asks you for a response. Turn one, and then you try to break it. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like so so relieving to not have to worry about also, where to hand trap your opponent you just sit back and relax you say hey man hey opponent nice job like that's fantastic that's a good play uh and then we go oh i want to make her so bad but i don't have zones and this is oh yeah for, yeah exactly this is another thing like the zones at the time which is weird like nightmare and make her instead just say cannot make nightmare all right, stand by me. All right, you do have a crescendo I have to play through, which I is do. kind of annoying. Which you could do uh, by just activating Super Poly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's start with Glyphae. Oh, yeah, this is fine. Two. I like life. Well, there's like nine now you can Super Poly the two darks and pop the other one to uh, play around everything. All right, Nightmare. Uh, we'll go... I think I'm going to do this, actually. Uh, I will chain the pank. Go after oh, God. Said. Just well, go. Fuck you, too. <laughs> You don't want to banish it? That's fine, too. That's fine. Actually, this play is fine. You're right. It probably doesn't matter because we do have Super Poly. Now, he should not discard Hextrude. Oh, no. Why? The, the, the Gizmek is a free discard, Zemo. Oh, Zemo. What? what? You might want that Hextrude next turn when you need to normal summon it from your hand. Oh, my gosh. Oh, sorry. Hextrude has an effect. Hold on. Also, uh, he, the Starving Venom can gain attack. Oh, I can destroy any card. Yeah, pop the wolf so I don't make what's his name. Fuck yeah. Yeah, you're never getting that thing. All right. We'll go battle. Uh, so this is eight. Are you? 100% that's OTK if he gains attack with the uh, Starving Venom, but... Hey. It is what it is, right? Uh, she, she can't attack directly, though. It, has it is what it is. Yeah. And then we'll go Gizmec while we're at it, too. Yeah. Why not? Sure. <laughs> Uh, we'll make. Oh, we can't make. Oh, we can make Santafon. Yeah, we can. Just, uh, yeah, um, yeah, he's an eight. Isn't that great? Santafon's pretty good. <laughs> it's little light tiger. <laughs> Any threat activate effect again? Yeah. A little, a little sloppy. A little sloppy coming out from Simo, but uh, uh, hey, we'll give him the pass, right? We'll give him the pass. Uh, because he's the one that chooses to play Gwen Machu, so we'll give him the pass. I don't care. Yeah, it's fine. Normal Kaleido check. Sure. Uh, let's offer a draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. Fuck you, I'm not taking that. God, we, got, <laughs> we got annihilated. What the hell? I, I'm impressed. Like, a lot of people, like, so around this time, uh, people underestimated this. I mean, it's not the best totally deck ever and never I mean, will be. This deck got second at one but it was pretty good won the YCS at this time. It, and they were two different versions of the deck. Like, like, I'm not the. Listen, still, like, I'm an okay Yu Gi Oh player. I'm not the greatest Yu Gi Oh player of all time. The deck was decent. I, I didn't come to with some, like, tier 15, like, deck to get a second out of YCS. Like, I, I need my deck to do put in some work for me. I didn't see Gren Maju once, by the way. So, like, it's funny True. to call this a Gren Maju deck when, like, the signature card of the deck True. wasn't even needed. Um, granted, Sanofon, let's be honest, this card existing kind of makes a lot of the games against this deck non-games, just because so many of the decks during the time... Were well, hey, <laughs> that's not my problem, is it? <laughs> this guy's trying to set... This guy's trying to set something in a counter trap. Yeah, no, the deck kind of like... Let the man play Sanofon. Let me play Sanofon, you know? <laughs> right, everyone in Yu-Gi-Oh is trying to stop your opponent from playing. So, the Luna 
Slide stuff is very powerful and was very popular during this period, not only in Orcus, but I think they were experimenting it All right. back in like Dark Wars. This was a great trip down memory lane, guys. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the problem is that the extra I love watching Grandma do. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's just it brings it brings a warmness to my heart. Kind of the to um, uh, all right, right, guys. I think that's gonna be it. I want to thank Simo and MPT for for giving me a chance to walk down memory lane here. Let me give a comment on this video. Actually, this this needs a comment, huh? This needs a comment. Down memory lane. All right, guys, I think that'll do it for me. I am going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know if you'd like to react to me on my old Grimaji videos. There's, I'm sure there's a lot on the internet. I could react to them all. Um, yeah, I'll try to post some more. I know I haven't been posting that much. Um, yeah, all right, that's it, guys. Enjoy the video. See you in the next one.